All right, guys, what's up? Welcome to the Athletes Ocean Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Nolf, and today we have joining us Eb- Ebed and Stephen Gerald. Ebed was a two-time qualifier, uh, two-time NCAA qualifier for Drexel, and uh, Stephen Russell for Johnson & Wales D3 school. He is actually the all-time, or at least for that year, tech fall leader, um, took second in the country, and uh, they're both owners of Iron Faith Grappling, which is a subscription group on Athletes Ocean. So welcome, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Sweet. Yeah, so I guess we. I wanted to bring you guys on to talk about how you guys have been using Ocean for Iron Faith Grappling and how it's been benefiting your athletes. So I know you guys have over 65 members in your group on Ocean, and you have over 75 videos put up. So... Talk a little bit about, um, you know, why you decided to put content on Ocean and how how you've been liking the the product so far. Yeah, definitely. So we used to have a different software, um, but the biggest problem is that there was no app to it, you know, and and we wanted the kids to have uh, the content, not necessarily the parents. I don't care if the parents are watching, the parents of our members are watching me break down a move. You know, I want these kids to have the access to it. And it, realistically, if you don't have an app, um, the kids aren't going to websites to, to try and find content. Um, so I was super pumped that it was an app. Uh, and my whole goal with it, the reason why we want to give our kids these content is because the main thing is making them better at wrestling. Um, and we started, the way we were able to do that is we created what's called like a laces program, which is essentially a belt system. And we use Oceans to uh, show them what technique they should learn for each level. Um, So the kids, once they sign up as a member, they get access to the Oceans account. Um, They go into one of our groups. If they're wrestling, they go to wrestling. If they're jujitsu, they go to jujitsu. And if they're judo, they go to the the judo group. So that's kind of how we split up our, um, our different groups inside Oceans. And for the, like, the main folks was the wrestling one. You know, we do have jiu-jitsu and judo, but, like, most of our members are wrestling right now. So our laces program, we essentially have albums inside of our group where we said, hey, when you're at level one, you want to know these techniques. So you go to this album. Then if you're level two, you're going to go to this album. And then if you're level three, you're going to go to this album. And after they uh, watch those techniques – and they get them down, we'll test them at the, at our facility, um, to kind of level up. So it's been, it's been awesome. All the kids have been, uh, super excited. I I have like, uh, parents, uh, sending me videos of their kids, like drilling techniques on their sisters and stuff like that. It's like definitely, uh, helping the kids get a lot better for sure. That's really cool. Yeah. So I I mean, a lot of wrestling clubs don't use any type of lace or belt system. So, you know, to be able to implement that successfully into your club is pretty cool because it it does motivate kids. I know, like, I know at least in jujitsu and judo, like people always want to, uh, get, get a new belt. They're like, Oh, I'm a, I'm a white belt. I want to be a blue belt. I want to be a purple belt. So, uh, I'm sure these kids, and it definitely gives them something to strive towards and gives them an extra motivation to get those techniques, uh, down, right. Yeah, for sure. And it's kind of a, t- it's almost like a little bit of a touchy subject because, you have nothing against any other martial arts, but like you have karate and some of this other stuff where you're like, you're buying your bell or like your kid's not really learning a skill, but he's still leveling up. And so for us, it wasn't about like, hey, come here and you get to buy your next bell. It's more like we're using the, the laces program to help guide the kids into what they should be focusing on learning and to give them some other goal outside of just the competition. I mean, of course, they're going to compete, and of course, it's great to compete, but it's also good to focus on learning the skills. And so the belt system, along with um, your app, has helped the kids or helped us to develop a program for the kids to focus on learning. And if they're focused on learning and learning the techniques right and implementing them right, then they're going to get better as, as a result. Yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel like in jiu-jitsu uh... – people get their belts more based on time rather than skill. Sometimes, obviously, if you're highly skilled, you'll get your belts a little bit quicker. But 
you see some black belts out there and they're not very good at jujitsu. They just put a lot of time in and uh, have been doing it for years and years. But you guys have a system where if you're not getting these techniques, you're not getting your, your new lace. Like if you're not, if you don't have this down, how strict are you guys when you're uh, having, do you have like a day where everybody presents their technique and then, oh, yeah. how, and then how strict are you guys on that? Tell me a little bit about those yeah, days. So I get to watch. So my brother does all the testing for it and he's got a full sheet, like, each technique to the detail. And it's like, if you don't go, if you don't get every single move a hundred percent, the way it needs to be, it's like, you're, I don't care like who you are. Like you're not passing, like, you know, immediate, you can, immediate like, fail. Do you get a second try? Yeah. You'll, fi you'll finish out the test, but it's like, you're still not going to pass. You know, you'll get the corrections on what you need to adjust, but it's like, you know, it doesn't matter if you've wrestled a year or two years. Like if you don't know the techniques, it's like, you're not going to get the belt. It doesn't matter who your parent is or whatever, how much yeah. money you pay for anything. It's wow. like, you got to have the techniques down. Yeah. And the way we do it, we do it, we do it monthly. So, and this is what helps the kids using the app is um, I tell them a month before, Hey, you're going to be tested at the end of the month. So, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to get people to use, to do the extra work, right? These kids are just like doing, you know, we have 10 year olds, 11 year olds, as well as like high school too. But like, they got other stuff to do. How can we motivate these kids to uh, put the extra work in outside the mat. And it's like a month before, even if they haven't been using it, a month before I tell them, hey, you're gonna get tested, they're gonna hop on that app and they're gonna figure out, because they sometimes they'll be members with us for like two months and then they'll be like, well, what am I gonna get tested? I'm like, well, you gotta go on the app and go check it out. Yeah. So um, that's what's really helped us kind of like get the people actually using it instead of it just being like, hey, the information's there. And, and if we didn't keep it strict, then like, they wouldn't have to study for it. You know what I yeah. mean? So it's like the kid tries it, you fail, you, you're going to get tested the following month. So you have there's to wait another month. No, there's no cheating. There's no, Hey, help, help me out on this test. You know, that it, it's all up to, it's all up to each individual kid, which is, and that's really cool because a, a lot of kids, I'm sure it like motivates them to even train during the summer. Uh, when a lot of, when other people are taking breaks, they're, they're still studying um, and trying to improve their skills. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, we fully believe in training all year round. It, when you're a kid, I think doing other sports is awesome. Um, but I think wrestling is by far the best sport. Um, obviously, that's why I'm uh, in the business of wrestling. So I, I believe in that. Um, and these lace system help people. Like, why, why do kids do karate at five years old and they're doing it until they're all 12 all year round while they're doing their other sports? Right. You know what I mean? It's because they want to get their black belt or whatever. So we're, we were hoping to use that to help these kids like stick it out a little bit longer. Um, and, and cause sometimes, you know, they go to compete, they get beat up. Well, then they got no other reason to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so yeah, that's been like a, you know, it's been, it's been really cool. And we even joke about how hard it's going to be. We say like to get like the black belt or whatever for us, it's, it's gold laces. They have to they have to take down every single one of the coaches in a row. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That, no, they have not taken me down. So no, yeah, I was just say that might take them a few years. They might they might be coming back after college to get their to get their gold laces. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's it's cool that we have a, a centralized platform for all this technique sharing because, uh, like you said, the kids can learn even when they're at home and uh, they can hit it on their sisters and you know drill it on their parents and it just when when you can keep wrestling a game i think people get caught up in the uh the seriousness of wrestling and they try to like they, they think it's such a serious sport when in reality it's just another game you know hear coach kale talk about this all the time you know it, it's a really fun game uh it's it's probably a little bit tougher than most games but uh when you can motivate people and and make them feel like it's a game kind of like the lay system i mean when you're playing a video game you're like i always want to upgrade to the next level anytime there's like a next level that you can upgrade to people want to do it. So when you, when you give that in wrestling without the lace system, uh, there's not always like, there's like the state, the state championship and the national championship, but there's not that many like levels that you can like work towards in like on a normal basis. And you kind of have to be patient in wrestling because it does take a really long time to get better and to reach your goals. You know, I, I've gone, uh, when I was younger, like, I like there was these tournaments that I could never win, never win, never win. And then like four years later, I was winning all the tournaments. And then there was another set of tournaments that I, that I couldn't win. And then I was winning those. And that's kind of the way it's been my whole life. 
Uh, but with the with the lace system, you're given those you're given those wins and and making it fun for the athletes to continue to come into practice and look forward to coming into practice and uh, you know training these specific techniques. For sure, and it, and and with oceans, that gives us like essentially uh, an ability to scale it. So, like for example, let's say you know we're running a class. There might be 40, 50 kids there. It's an hour and a half class. It's like after that class, it's like you, we only have so much time we can spend each kid individually. But it's like, hey, we've we've got the techniques we like and the way we like to do them. We've got it all mapped out. And it's like, hey, you can spend as much time as you want going on the app and just viewing the techniques the exact way we like them. Not to say like our way is the only way by any means but it gives us consistency. And then it's like, okay, we know where our team is as a whole and where we need to focus on. And so it's like, if everyone's watched all the same technique videos, we know like, okay, as a team, this is the moves we need to make going forward. Yeah. I mean, you, it, it's important. Every team needs to have their own system. So each individual athlete is going to find their own way to, you know, manipulate these moves and, and to hit them in competition, but to have a system that your team can completely buy in on, uh, that that's super important. It's very valuable because then, like you said, like at a competition, if you see a, a big chunk of your people are struggling with one area, you can, uh, you can go address that situation at practice. Yeah. So that's really good. And the other thing is like, like you were saying, like with wrestling, it's important to have the fundamentals down, right? Good positioning on your shots, knee over toe penetration, sprawls, all that. Um, but like realistically, as kids get better, they kind of pick their own wrestler, right? They 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 pick their own top series. They pick maybe the certain setups they like. And that's kind of what we've done. In addition, we first kept it as like, you learn this move, you get the laces. But then we changed the program a little bit around where it's like, well, realistically, you know, if they're at like a level three laces, I don't necessarily need them to know a million moves. I need them to have an actual series. Yeah. So like after level one, where they level one, they know what the basic techniques, you know, single, double, high crotch, finish on your feet, um, breakdowns, all that stuff. Level two is like, show me your top series, you know? And, and, I, and what I did in oceans is I put, you know, I put that in there, like my top series or whatever, like, Hey, this is what you need to find your own top series. And then level three, hey, show me your top series again, but this time maybe five moves. Yeah. Uh, and then explain to me why why you're actually doing it a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. So like, it, it that's kind of like the mixture of like, hey, do it exactly how we're saying it, and and giving them more more of a leeway to like, hey, we've we've shown you a uh, thirty top moves. I don't care if you know all of them. You know, you're really only going to use two or three. You got to pick it, and you got to and you got to choose what what's going to work best for you. So I totally agree with that. Yeah, uh, I think that's that's really cool that you do that. I think a lot of coaches, even at the college level, um, they're not willing to give, uh, they're not willing to give their athletes any freedom. And I think that's what holds back a lot of programs is they they make them do things a certain way. And it's good to like we talked about having systems, having fundamentals that that we work on and wrestling fundamentals, but you know, giving the athletes the freedom. Uh, that may, uh, number one, it's more fun to have freedom and, and, uh, be able to play wrestle and kind of play wrestle in situations that you've learned or you're trying. And two, I mean, everybody's body and everybody's style is different. So what works for one person might not work for the other person, even if they're doing it pretty much the same way. So, uh, I've seen that a lot, uh, especially at Penn state, you know, people have the same tendencies, but, uh, you know, some, some people will try to be too coachable. Like we talk about being coachable versus uh, being like authentic to yourself and your style too. Uh, it's definitely, you always want to listen to your coaches. Uh, I don't want to say, but, but uh, you know, sometimes there's cer certain things that even the best coaches in the world, they're teaching you, it might work for them. It doesn't work for you. Um, so like my solution to that is drill and listen to what your coaches are teaching you and, and, continue to try to hit them in competition and um, hit them on your uh, best opponents at practice. And, you know, if it's, it, it's something that you want to talk to your coach with, say, Hey, like, I don't, I don't know if this is working for me. Uh, what do you think about this? So like, I, I always ask uh, a ton of questions and, you know, if my, 
it, my, my coaches probably don't like it too much, but they're, uh, they're like, cause I ask why a lot. Like they tell yeah. me to do something. I'm like, why, why do you want me to do that? Because I don't, I don't, I don't want to just blindly follow something. Uh, yeah. I, I want to know exactly why this person thinks, uh, that that technique is good. And I, when, when you do ask why, like your coaches, they have to be good coaches and, and give you an accurate reason why. And if they can't, then then why why would you yeah. listen why would you listen to a coach that doesn't know why they're telling you what they're what they're telling you so um yeah i think that's always uh very it's a very uh fine line between being coachable and uh you know doing things that work for you so yeah, yeah. the the whole because i said so only works for so long i mean it's like yeah i mean right. some of the little kids like maybe you know maybe that that works but like as you as you start to get better you have specific things that you're good at like the same for me like I had specific things I like to do and so when coaches were like hey do this or do that it's like okay does that fit into what into, into my style does that make sense for me like let's say I'm a leg rider if someone's all of a sudden said oh you should be you know doing this bar series and this that and the other it's like and I got two more years of wrestling left am I going to be able to really master a bar series in my last two years of wrestling or should I really focus on Hey, how do I add a few more details into my leg series or some different ways to get there so that, you know, I'm actually successful with my top series versus just, I got a couple of moves from each category. Right. There's so many factors that go into it. Like you said, you know, it, it's your last month of wrestling and people are trying to change up what you're doing or like even during the wrestling season, you have, you have two months until the NCA or one month until the NCA championships and people are trying to teach you two, new techniques. It's like, <laughs> All right, may, may, maybe this summer is the time to learn these techniques. Maybe not right before the national to tournament. You know, R right now, and even like even for me, like I'm getting ready to compete in Final X. Um, you know, I I'm trying to sharpen my tools. I'm not trying to learn new things. I'm trying to get as sharp as I can and be as mentally ready as I can be. And I think that's the most important thing you can do during the season. During the summer, sure, try to learn new techniques. Try to, especially like when you're young. Uh, try yeah. to learn as much as you can. And the more you can learn during the summer, the more you're going to figure out what works for you. And uh, I, I'll, I will say, like, like you said, you don't, you don't need to uh, know a million things, but you gotta, you gotta do what works for you and you gotta do it uncommonly well. So that that's something my coach always told me the best people do the common things uncommonly well. So, you know, really mastering your techniques and getting really, really good at three to f three to four to five moves. Um, you know, I, I know people that have become Olympic champions with one move outside step high crotch guy from Japan. Uh, he trained at Penn state, uh, Yonamitsu. He only did one move outside step high crotch, but he, he was so good at it that, uh, he won an Olympic title with it. Yeah. That's yeah. wild. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it is. It is like, even the same, like we have, you know, both Evan and I have had a lot of the same coaches growing up, but he went, you know, he went to Drexel. I went to do. So there's certain things I learned at Johnson Will is different than he learned at Drexel. And so with um, kind of with our whole plan with our laces program and using the app, it's like, okay, here are our core, like, where are we like, Hey, this is our hard, like you must do it this way techniques. And then it's like, okay, well, if I have a leg series on top, it's like, okay, let's show mine. And then let's help the kids to learn that. If he has a bar series, it's like, okay, when you're getting into like middle school and high school, you may not, you know, you may not like to ride legs. So it's like, okay, if you're going to do bars, these are the series of techniques we want you to learn. And these are the different ways you can get there. And it's like, okay, start to kind of put them together in the way you like to put them together. Yeah. Yeah. And I highly recommend like, it, it's all like, it's awesome for the kids to, um find people they look up to and, and and use their techniques but i recommend other clubs out there and other places that are um that are looking to help their kids out to be on oceans to be making technique videos because yet if you want them to know your system then you got to show you got to have a system first and you got to show them it you know and again it doesn't have to be crazy I mean, everyone needs to know a double, a single, a high crotch. You know, you don't have, like if if you want them, if you don't want to put any like crazy moves in there or whatever, you can just keep it simple, you know, and, and use a, use it to help your youth kids learn the fundamentals. So I really suggest like 
a, a lot of clubs should be doing the same thing we're doing. Even if they don't have a laces program, they should be putting, hey, these are the, when you, the first three months of wrestling at our club, we need you to learn these techniques, you know, because that's going to definitely, that we've seen a big impact in our kids. And I, and I definitely think it will help, help a lot of kids out. Yeah. And, and for us, the biggest, what we found at least with, with, with our club, like the biggest people, biggest reason people tend to quit wrestling is because they're not winning. Like if people are winning all the time and they're going to tournaments and doing well, like you don't want to quit stuff that you're doing good at. But if you're like, Oh, I just signed up for wrestling. This is my first year. I just lost 30 matches in a row. Uh, I don't think this sports for me. And it's like, well, you know, if you put enough time in like, yeah, you're going to get good, but it's like, not everyone's going to make it past that. Like a lot of times, like the people who end up staying in wrestling, like, yeah, they start off, they weren't good, but like, they just had some passion for it. They stuck through it. So it's like, how do we get people past that initial part when they start wrestling where they're not good? Like, how do we get them to learn as quickly as possible so that they can start to win and see some success in the sport? Yeah, that always motivated me. Uh, I mean, I think it's in our nature to hate losing. I don't think anybody likes to lose. You see some people kind of smile and stuff after they lose. Uh, to me, that means that they don't care about uh, – they don't care about wrestling and, and stuff like that. And that's never a good thing. Um, and so, yeah, like you're saying, I mean, and I've noticed too, like a wrestling club, like most people join a wrestling club. Like you see a lot of uh, high volume, like right before big tournaments, like they're like, Oh man, the state tournaments about the, the state tournaments about to <laughs> yeah. happen. Like uh, let, we better, we better go to club practice for, for a month and then we'll be ready for the state tournaments. Like, no, you should you should probably just go to the club all year round and not just try to go whenever uh, the timing suits you. You know, if you really want to win, you got to be committed and put the work in. And you know, and and people can buy into your system. You know, it, it, and sometimes you know, even if you do have those people that join late, you'll have a few people that join late. You know, at least they'll have your system on Ocean that they can go back and review and try to try to uh, make sure that they master. Um, you know, before going into practice. Yeah, exactly. And like, we have people come in like, oh, as a freshman in high school, like, oh, I'm starting late, but like, maybe they sucked at every other sport before that. And they're like, this is my last result. Let me, let me try some wrestling. Like we have uh, our youngest brother, Michael. Um, he essentially tried all our sports. He was pretty good. Like he swam, he did basketball, soccer, football. He did a little bit of everything, but like, didn't really find the sport that connected with him. And we had all started in middle school. And so freshman year, he's like, all right, I'm going to like give wrestling another shot. He starts wrestling and literally for pretty much a year straight, he lost every single match. The only match he won freshman year was he got illegally slammed by some kid who was jacked out of his mind. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like, and I, and I show up to like watch him wrestle. I'm trying to help him. Like I'm, I'm working with him. And after that match where he got slammed, I'm like, dude, there's no way. He, I'm like, he's walking off the mat. He's never wrestling a day in his life. And like 20 minutes later, he comes up to me. He's like, how do I stop him from doing that? And I'm like, oh, he's hooked. Like, I got him. Like, if you can make it past that, like, you can make it, you know, 20 losses in a row, like, you're in. And so pretty much from that point on, what I did with him is we kind of worked once a week. We kind of did some – did some like one-on-one -on -one stuff and he just stuck with it. And by the time he got to his junior year, he took second at States senior year. He won States places at new England's and then goes out to Virginia beach and, and all Americans. And it's like, you know, when people come to me and they say, Oh, like, you know, I don't know if I can do that good. Like I'm just starting as a freshman. Like I use him as an example. I'm like, you can do things so much greater than what you probably are imagining but it's like you're you're putting a limit on yourself because of what you've done in the past or what you think is possible. It's like, and that's part of our job as coaches. It's like, hey, we're gonna remove that that limit and get you to think bigger. But then also we're gonna we're gonna provide the path for you to actually get what it is that you're trying to chase after. Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. I was kind of getting the chills when you were talking about that because I see that all the time. Uh, you know, if you're really really willing to put the work in and like even if it's an extra couple times a week, uh, you know, you you see that improvement all the time. You know, I, where I grew, I grew up in Pennsylvania, which is, I mean, a really tough wrestling state. And I'd have teammates that would go their freshman year, they'd go seven and 15, seven and 25. 
and then their sophomore year they'd go 12 and 18 and then they'd maybe have like a 500 record or junior year but then their senior year they would uh be like 30 and 10 different th- different stuff yeah. like that where if you see like the commitment over time you know it, it really pays off i mean there's really no substitute for hard work and um you know it sounds cliche but it, it's crazy you know what belief in yourself can do you know just believing that you can make something out of yourself and work hard to make that happen it's pretty cool yeah, yeah for sure and that was part of why like we chose or i chose iron faith as the name and like there was a couple things kind of in it but like one part was just my my faith like and and, and my belief in god and kind of the reason why i do everything i do and then part of it, like iron, iron strong. So it's essentially like strong faith. And it's like, for me, you know, there was a couple of things like you must, like, you got to believe in yourself. Like if you, if you don't believe in yourself, like it's very hard to get your coaches to believe in you. It's very hard to actually kind of make it through when you have a loss because it's, it's like wrestling's not easy. I mean, nothing in life that that's good is really all that easy. And so there's going to be ups and downs. And it's like, if you don't have your goal set and you don't have, faith that you can actually make it happen it's like you're not going to be able to do it like when when you get a little bump on the road you're gonna be like ah you know maybe i'm just gonna take the summer off or whatever it is so it's like when you have a goal and you have faith that it's going to happen now it kind of creates a uh a situation where you actually like it might actually be possible not to say it's guaranteed i mean nothing is guaranteed obviously but like if you don't believe that you can do what it is that you've set out to do it's it's very unlikely that it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Our biggest uh like as a coach, what I've been learning is that technique super important, but the stuff outside of technique is even more important as a coach. Like these kids are coming in, they don't even know what a state title is or a national title is or a whatever. They're like just doing this for fun. And when you try when you if you can convince that kid to set a big goal and to actually get them to believe that they can do it, that's going to make such a bigger impact than showing them, you know, a half Nelson or whatever. So a lot of people think that think the technique is like the most important thing, but it's like, can you inspire these kids to, to, to do club all year round? If you can, if you can convince a kid that he could, if he does club all year round, he's going to do a lot better at at the state tournament. You can actually convince them that that's going to do a lot more than, showing him a certain technique because he's going to get double the amount of practice as everybody else. Right. Yeah. That's, I mean, like, like what you're saying, like technique is technique is important and that's why we show technique at class. You know, most, most practices are technique because you want to get people good, but the stuff outside of that, like, for example, I was, um, I was trying to help some of the Penn state guys uh, just with aggressiveness. Um, because even at the college level, like the person who's more aggressive, we got 10 minutes left, but the person, the, uh, the person that's more aggressive, uh, wins most of the matches. So if you can just go out there and just be mean and physical and snap the guy down, push him out of bounds, you know, wrestle hard, wrestle high pace. Yeah. You might give up some takedowns. Like obviously the, the, the more aggressive you wrestle, the more likely it is that you give up points, but it doesn't really matter because at the end of the match, it's all about who scores more points. So that person's by wrestling at tough pace, it's going to get that person a lot more exhausted, and uh, they're just not going to want to wrestle you again. Like if you can get if you can get somebody to wrestle that is just aggressive and loves to compete, that's that's almost more important than than good technique because it's like I'm just going to go out and throw you down. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, and I've like I've I'm sure all of us have had similar uh, experiences, but it's like. I've wrestled with kids who, you know, were much more talented or their technique was maybe better or they were great in the practice room, but it's like when the lights are on and the nerves hit, they're holding back. And so like one of the things that, you know, between my junior and senior year, I made a big jump. One of the things that happened was like, I started to really believe in, in my techniques and I started to get them down, but it's like, I just pulled the trigger on my shots. Yeah. Like I don't, it didn't have to be perfect. Like it, it's not going to be perfect. It's, it's very rare that you hit some perfect technique when, so when you're wrestling someone at a high level, who's literally trying as hard as they possibly can to stop you from hitting it. Like you're going to be in bad position. Sometimes you're going to take a bad shot. Sometimes 
But it's like, if you let the fear of like, oh, what if I shoot and he scores? If you let that get in your head too much, all of a sudden he's deep in on a shot. So it's like, you have no control of what happens in the match or the pace or, or what positions you end up in. It's like, for me, the biggest thing is like, just go. And yeah. even like, like we have kids who go and compete and like, sometimes there's not a coach there. Like, you know, kids travel to different places and, and it's like the coach isn't going to win the match for you. A lot of times it's like, a lot of times, at least my coaches would just be like, you just need to go. Like you, we've spent, you know, the last nine years, you know, mastering the techniques. Like now it's a matter of like, you just pull the trigger and you get to your positions. Like, you know, you're good. You got to get there. You can't, you can't stand there dancing and, and waste two minutes. You just yeah. don't have the time for it. I like what you said. You got a lot better when you just started pulling the trigger. That's exactly the same thing that happened with me my junior year. Um, you know, my dad would always give me, you need to shoot more, you need to shoot more, you need to shoot more. And I was always like, oh, I don't like if, if it wasn't the perfect shot, I wasn't hitting it. But then I just started shooting, even if it wasn't a perfect shot, even if I, even if they kept stopping it, you know, I got one, I got really good at wrestling from underneath the front headlock. Now I don't really get spun behind ever. Like if you can wrestle and you're like, no one's ever going to spin behind me, then what are you afraid of shooting for? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, getting really good underneath there and you get good at shooting by shooting more. So you, you, you learn the timing and, and what it takes to get to the person's leg and what it takes to finish by putting yourself in that situation. So if you're never shooting and you're always waiting for the perfect opportunity, which is rarely going to come then you're not going to get better. So you need to just start practicing shooting, shooting, shooting more in your practices and your competitions. And that's how you re get really good at the timing and, and the technique, honestly. Yeah, exactly. It's like, like, let's say, you know, uh, like you're on a team and there's 30 guys and during season, it's like, well, everyone's going to practice the same amount of hours, you know, kind of. It's like everyone's practicing every single day and doing lifting. It's like, how do you, how do you gain ground on the people who are ahead of you um, with the same amount of time? And it's exactly what you're saying. It's like, you, you need to take a lot, there needs to be a lot of action. Like take the shots in practice, not just like, oh, I'm going to dance, like take a hundred shots. Don't be afraid. Okay. They score on you 20 times, but you scored 40. Right. It's like, it's not a big deal. Like you end up getting so much more out of your practice than most people. Cause people are, afraid of getting scored on in practice. And then it just carries over to match. But if you're like, Hey, I'm just going to open up. I'm going to attack as much as possible. You're getting two, three or four times the amount of reps other people are getting. And over a long period of time, if you're getting four times the reps, you're going to get four times better. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So yeah, I, I guess I, the, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was just like your athletes feedback. Do you, do you have, do you have your athletes like, staying after practice and trying to hit these techniques that you've been teaching in ocean. Like what, have, what have they thought about the app? I know that you, you, you mentioned that they're hitting it at home on their sisters and stuff like that, but they, they, do they get excited about the app? They're like, so. Oh yeah. So I had like, like when I tell them, Hey, uh, your test coming up, I had one kid like, uh, that was getting tested after I tested him. He was, or before I, before I was going to test him, he was like, dude, I've been watching. I went, I've been watching videos for the past two hours to make sure I got this thing down. Like, and he, and he, and he did get it. So I was like fired about that. Um, and just like, and the parents actually like it too. They're like, it's just an added value to the kids. They're like, Oh wow. My kid can have like even more, you know, even more help with his techniques that he's having trouble with. Um, yeah. so yeah, it's been, it's been amazing feedback. And, and the biggest thing with us is, uh, we have a goal as, as our company is to impact a million athletes. Um, so we think as we scale and as ocean scales, we'll be able to, they'll, they'll, we'll be able to uh, do that with you guys. Yeah. So, you know, really we'll, cool. we'll have a hundred thousand members in our group or whatever. Yeah. Right. And they'll be getting that and they'll be getting, um, better with those techniques, you know? And maybe we introduce more people into it. And right now it's been focused on the wrestling. Um, uh, but our club is wrestling jujitsu and judo. And we have we have jujitsu members and judo members. We're just got to record those technique videos pretty much. And so what's holding us back on that. But uh, but yeah, um, we, we love what you guys have been doing. And we love the help too. Like, hey, we want to make a little adjustment. We send it to your team and they help us out. You guys aren't like, you know, you guys aren't some uh like 
company that you can never reach and you can't get help with, you know, like if I reached out to you and was like, Hey, can you help me out with this? You'd send me the, the person to talk to and we would get that, we would get that fixed. So I really do appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that too. Um, yeah, we always, we're always, uh, we're always available for feedback and, um, you know, we're a new company, so we're consistently trying to fix all the the problems that people are having and the problems are getting fewer and fewer, but there's, there's always things that pop up, you know, as with all companies. Um, yeah. but you know, we try to address them as quickly as possible and, uh, we'll, we'll continue to get better as a company. So did you guys have any, uh, do you guys have any future plans for how you're going to use the site? I know, like I personally, I do like, I basically put four types of content in my subscription group. I put technique, mindset, competition breakdowns, and live roles. Do you guys plan on implementing any of that or uh, planning on using the platform to uh, do anything yeah, else? Yeah. So our our first thing was like getting people onboarded, right? Getting people onboarded to our group. Um, and we, and our, our social medias are growing pretty good. We're not like crazy big, but like our, our, our uh, Iron Faith Grappling has 27,000 followers. One of our judo coaches has 60,000 followers. So we've got some people that have some following and, and we can't, you can't tap into that market if you're just a, a brick and mortar club, right? I mean, yeah, you can run some camps, but like people, some people don't really travel that far unless like, you know, you're, you're a very uh, like big name club. So we want to have that additional product for uh, people outside of, you know, our 20 mile radius that that we're servicing um so yeah our, our first plan is just onboarding all of our guys our current members into it getting that getting uh the exact way we want to do it down and then um you know as we continue to grow i think subscriptions is definitely something that that we're interested in yeah so, that's cool yeah and and even with this like because we just started our second location uh yesterday on tuesday was our first Congrats. practice it's awesome. Thank you. It's this is one of the things that's really going to help us keep um, consistent as we start to add more locations and hire more coaches, because there's a lot of, at least we're finding there's a lot of people who finish wrestling in college and they want to get back, but it's like they don't know where to go to get back, or they don't have any coaching experience, or they don't really know, you know, how to share their knowledge, and it's like. This is going to help us train the athletes, but at some point going to help help train the coaches as well and keep it so we're consistent, you know, throughout all of our all of our clubs. Right. I do appreciate appreciate you, you having us on. And I just want to say like good luck at Final X. Thank you. Know, you. Let's go. And, yeah. No, thank you guys. That was a that was a an amazing uh, podcast. I appreciate you guys coming on. I appreciate all the work that you guys have done for Ocean. So thank you again. Absolutely. Uh, have a nice you. day. See you guys.